Hello, my name is Lloyd Yoon from Night and Day Photography. What I'm talking about today is about a laptop for photo editing. And what I have here is the relatively new Lenovo ThinkPad X220T. The X stands for Lenovo's powerful yet extra compact and light line of products. And the T stands for tablet. Its standard features are a choice of i3, i5, or i7 Sandy Bridge processors. Up to 8 gigs of RAM. VGA out, DisplayPort out, Express Card port, SD card reader, built-in mic. Optional stuff is the 720p camera up here, and the 3x3 Wi-Fi antenna that is in the screen. And it also has optional parts like the internal 3G modem with 3G antenna, so you can go totally mobile like you would with an iPad or a Galaxy Tab, or a fingerprint reader and Bluetooth. But I'm looking at this laptop from a professional photographer's point of view. Now I chose this model because of its distinct features that benefit photographers in particular. I mean, first is the beautiful screen. It's a 12 and a half inch IPS panel. It's IPS in a laptop. In my opinion, IPS is critical for a photographer's laptop who has to work on the road. Now the screen is also a matte finish. It's not glossy, which is the trend nowadays. But the truth is, Glossy screens are not ideal for color accurate work. Another bonus of the IPS screen is the consistent color despite changing viewing angles too. Then we have the processors. You have the option of getting a powerful Sandy Bridge i7 processor that has enough muscle for raw photo editing and I can even edit high definition video on this laptop in Sony Vegas 64 bit. The next awesome feature is the express card port. Not that Express Card is awesome in itself, but my Express Card Compact Flash Reader, it lives inside that slot. So that gives me a very fast internal Compact Flash Reader. So there's no need to carry an external USB reader. And of course, there is the built-in SD slot, which is great because my video cameras use SD cards. So I have both of them built right in. Now you also have two external display options, one VGA port which is perfect for projector compatibility and a display port. So one awesome option is that there are two SATA drive bays, one internal micro SATA bay and a more standard two and a half inch SATA bay. Now that means you have two internal disks running with no adapters on a compact 12 and a half inch laptop. So you can install an SSD into the micro SATA bay for your OS and programs or Lightroom cache, Photoshop scratch, and you can have a standard hard drive for lots of storage space instead of toting a USB external drive. Or you can go dual SSD for pure speed, or you can just have one SSD in the micro SATA slot, empty the two and a half drive to save power and make the laptop even lighter. The point is, is that it gives us photographers lots of options on drive configurations. ThinkPads are built to address professionals with business requirements, like the need for speed, flexibility, and options. And that's what ThinkPads excel in. Now here's the best part about this machine. The screen has a built-in Wacom digitizer, much like an $1,100 Wacom Cintiq. And the screen is also capacitive multi-touch, so it can read both pen and finger inputs. So this is where it gets really fun. The screen swivels so you can operate the screen off axis which can really help if there's a group of people looking at the screen. You can also flip it totally backwards which is what I do at wedding receptions to display a slideshow. This way the keyboard is out of the way and it's out of view and it's kind of like its own stand. You can also lay it flat into a slate configuration and this is actually my preferred layout for pen and finger input. So first off, the multi-touch screen lets you navigate your programs with your fingers, much like iOS or Android would, and you have all your scrolling and, and clicking functions, probably like you're used to on your smartphones, and it also implements some basic OS gestures like back and forwards, page ups and page downs, and there's also the task switcher which you can navigate through your programs with, and then there are some programs that are actually multi-touch aware, like Surface Globe which allows you to browse your cities and maps uh, with a multi-touch interface in 3D and with multi-touch it becomes very easy and slick to navigate around. Next is the digitizer. 
the Wacom pen has its own holder, so it'll be much harder to lose for forgetful people like me. <laughs> so many people just hate working on photo editing without a pen. So this lets you work on your photos with a pen without having to pack a tablet, pen, and cables, and all kinds of other accessories with you. So Lightroom will work just like normal, except that now you can use your adjustment brushes right on the photo itself. So now you can use your pen to adjust things in Lightroom, like for example, a dust spot correction tool. We will just remove a couple of these blemishes here, and you can work right on the photo itself. And then next is the adjustment brush that you can use. So we'll go to another photo. Let's change the zoom setting. Now, when I look at this photo, she's just a little bit brighter than everyone else, so I'm just going to bring her into a some more similar range here. So, so I can use my pen, and I could draw right on her. His shirt's a little bright too, so is his shoe over here. And now that probably evens it out quite a bit more than it used to. So before and the after. Now in Photoshop, this works like a treat too. It treats pen and finger as two different inputs, so you have access to your pressure sensitive pen. But at the same time, you can use a two finger gesture to scroll around your image as you work. And just like the Intuos or the Cintiq, you have an eraser end too to erase some of the things you've done or some of the mistakes you've made. So is it perfect? Well, it's pretty darn close for my needs. Some people may hate the small screen, but when I buy a laptop, I want a small and light machine that's easy to carry around. For example, when I go to the chiropractor or something, I just grab my laptop and nothing else. I have no cables or anything, and I can design albums or retouch photos with a pen input right in the waiting room without bringing any accessories. Like I don't even bring a bag because it's so small and light as far as laptops go and it's fully functional with no external drives or devices. It's amazing when you consider it's a fully self-contained machine with a digitizer tablet and dual hard drives if needed. It's really not that much harder to bring this around over an iPad except I can run all my business software on it. It has all my automation scripts and everything. It's basically a copy of my desktop workstation. So for me, it's a win. I mean, I don't have to buy or learn any more software it runs everything I'm used to. It's very small and light and easy to carry around and it's very powerful. I can basically do anything I do on my workstation. I can do it on here. So is it a great machine? For me it is. Whether it is for you, that's totally up to your needs. But for me and I think for most photographers, I think this is the laptop of choice. I really do.